In this box I have the third overtone crystal for 10 MHz and its first amplifier stage. I'm feeding it uh, from this vent cell oscillator and sending it and I'm doing that through this attenuator which is set for 13 decibels. So I'm feeding 0 dBm into this box and then the output goes to this system I have here which is two direct conversion receivers. And then I'm analyzing the result in Linrod with the signal analyzer mode and this is what I see on the screen. And this is after six hours and 17 minutes and what I see is this. Uh, the real part is mostly yellow but to some extent also blue uh, and the imaginary part is equal in magnitude and this means I don't see the noise from the signal. This is only the noise of the system. The levels at 10 Hertz, something like this, means minus 145. 100 Hertz here, minus 174. So these numbers are below what I can see with this system. Uh, my local oscillators in the two channel receiver, they are not good enough. I will wait some more time uh, to see whether it still runs properly. I have a problem now that the temperature is varying, so sometimes the oscillators drift differently, so they lose uh, the phase locking between them, the two local oscillators in the direct conversion receiver, and that uh, destroys the measurement. So I will wait some more time to see whether it uh, continues to show a lower sideband noise or whether it fails. Now I have been collecting correlation averages for 32 hours. What I see is encouraging, but I cannot read anything out from this. Uh, the real part is positive and negative to about the same extent, and the imaginary part is equal in magnitude. It means I see the noise of my test system and I don't see the noise of the oscillator filter under test. Uh, but at very close ranges I see only the negative part. So there is some artifact of my system and that is known, I think. It has to do with how the PLL is organized or maybe something else. Anyway, my system is not good enough for this. So I read out the values and save 50 Hertz. I have about minus 168 and 100 Hertz, 178 or so. And this doesn't mean I have noted the noise it means it's some kind of limit of my system. I have increased the power by 3 dB and there have been spurious oscillations on the side of the carrier. You can see here and here. Right now they are not present but I am on the limit of where the crystal starts to misbehave. I have now connected the Wenzel oscillator directly to my test system and I placed it on top of the other box to have it uh, vibration isolated. And here is what I see on the screen. 
And as you can see, the noise is very clearly visible here. High above the imaginary part is the positive real part of the correlation average. And at 100 hertz, I see minus 162. And at about uh, 40 hertz, statistics isn't good enough anymore. And at very close range, the negative part dominates, because here my system is no longer producing the correct result. This is uh, some correlated signal between the channels uh, that could be from the sound card, but it could be also between the oscillators. Anyway, uh, the sideband noise at this range is too high, so I cannot hope for any reasonable result here. Uh, but at 50 Hz and above, I can trust my system. And it's clear that adding the filter improves by quite a lot, uh, but by how much, I cannot know now. My test system uses two local oscillators. I've used this one up till now, but I have just replaced it by this, which is the oscillator I spent several of the earlier NERDS videos showing how to optimize. And this has a better performance, but the other oscillator is still the same, uh, similar to that one. I will take this and modify it, because what I see now is much more interesting. Uh, the red curve is the new oscillator, the blue is the old one, and there is a significant difference. I am now measuring the Wenzel oscillator. It has been running for 15 hours. And I can compare it to what it looked like before. Now, this is not the Wenzel oscillator. This is the experiment trying to see the noise from my filter. But the important thing, if you compare them, these curves, you can see that the red trace has gone down uh, something like 10 dB or so. And the blue is essentially unchanged, because it is the same oscillator. Or maybe it is the other one, I don't remember anymore. I have changed wires up and down. Anyway, now uh, the margin in the determination of the noise for the Wenzel oscillator is from here to about here. 176 and... 162. That's about 14 dB. And here at 50 Hz it is 2, 4, 6, 8, maybe 10. I can see 10 dB lower noise now uh, than I could before. So uh, I will modify the other oscillator also and then see if I can detect the noise from the third overtone 10 MHz filter. My effort to improve this one has failed, unfortunately. I think probably the crystals are not so good in this unit. I have used the same crystals with the same configuration as I have in this unit, but the noise is not much better uh, than this one. Uh, this difference is very small and there are some other problems with it, so I will stay with these two and see what I can do with them. I am now running this unit as an oscillator for the first time. And 
This is what the screen looks like after 13 hours. At 10 Hz, uh, 143 minus 143. And 100 Hz, minus 169. Uh, and this is phase noise. And the amplitude noise should come here. And something is very wrong. As you can see, it is at 10 hertz, about minus 147. And it's the same as the amplitude noise uh, of my system. So, uh, well, and here is amplitude and phase noise in the same window, and the amplitude noise is much stronger than the phase noise. There is a problem in the power amplifier. I have eight junction FETs here, and I am looking with the oscilloscope. The upper trace is drain, and the lower trace is source and uh, at this time it works okay I'm looking at the waterfall spectrum here and now I am turning up in steps of 1 dB I'm running the unit as an amplifier 1 dB one more One more. And you can see clearly there is more noise now around here. And the voltage between drain and source starts to get very low. And then another two decibels. And this is a disaster, and you can see the voltage between drain and source is now very low and the curve has flattened. And this is a noisy process and I was too close to it. And the solution is to load more. I have increased the number of turns on the secondary winding on the transformer of the amplifier, the output amplifier to avoid uh, the voltage between uh, drain and source to come close to each other. This has improved, this is what I see now after 14 hours. What I had before this change is here, and particularly at the low end, you can see this is what I have now, it's still noisy, and this was what I had before. There is a couple of dB improvement. But, looking at the other end, here, uh, it has degraded significantly. And I see events here, noise bursts, and I don't know what that is. Uh, so, there are problems still, but it's encouraging to see the low level at low frequency offsets. I should expect a very big improvement here, bigger than what I see, because uh, I think this should go with Q squared. Uh, and if I compare the system I have here, and then Q squared from here, uh, that is 20 dB, and well, 1. 28, 148, maybe. Uh, anyway, uh, the amplitude noise here, uh, it is still pretty high. So something is not very good about the amplifier. Uh, I will start to look at this unit uh, as an amplifier 
to try to locate where the errors are. And I found far too much amplitude noise, so I made this experiment. First the Wenzel oscillator, an attenuator, then the filter, and uh, then the inductor to possibly feed a DC voltage here, or perhaps connect this point to ground. Then two FETs in parallel with a current and a source voltage and a transformer to not load too much here with a transformation ratio uh, which is ratio N2 over N1 plus N2 and you have this source voltage and the source resistor and possibly a decoupling capacitor here and possibly a decoupling capacitor here uh, for the gates and the green uh, shaded line that is my initial configuration uh, it was with the 82 ohms in the source that is then 138 millivolts per transistor uh, the observed noise level at a 10 Hz offset AM noise was minus 145. Uh, the vent cell that I'm feeding with uh, was minus 154, so that was about 10 decibels better for AM noise. Uh, I added 1000 microfarads uh, here as a source capacitor. The idea is that uh, this source resistor works as a negative feedback for the low frequency current. The noise current at uh, audio frequencies or in this case at 10 Hertz. Uh, so by this big capacitor uh, there will not no longer be any significant negative feedback from a source resistor. Uh, I expected a much bigger degradation but I could see only two decibels loss of performance. That's interesting I think. Then the next experiment you can see I went from 145 to 148 uh, what was that? Uh, yes, I am loading it less by changing the turns ratio on the output transformer. So no longer connecting the load here, but connecting it here with equal turns ratios, turns for N1 and N2. Uh, so the output signal is six, 6 decibels lower and then I changed again to 0.33 but that didn't improve any further. The next experiment was to make the source resistor smaller from 82 ohms to 39 ohms and of course that makes the drain current bigger, increases from uh, uh, 11 milliamps to 18 milliamps and the total power for each transistor now is 227 milliwatts. And I could see then minus 151, so that's three more decibels. Uh, then the next experiment, uh, I put this 1000 microfarad capacitor on the source uh, from here and that didn't degrade at all, which makes me surprised, but that is what I observe, no loss. Then. Uh, I tried some other things, uh, 
making the source, sorry, the gate voltage lower uh, and also increasing the current. But I couldn't see any improvement. So uh, optimum seems to be to have the full voltage uh, on the drain uh, and a small source resistor. In the end I have stopped at 27 ohms and uh, uh, well that's it. It is a significant improvement but uh, what I see uh, is still a loss compared to the Wenzel which was at minus 154. And a little confusing is this. I have disconnected the power amplifier that I used previously and now I have only the feedback amplifier. It's also two JFETs in parallel uh, with noiseless feedback and they feed through 47 ohms to anti-parallel 1N1148 and then I have some LC links the final one adjustable to get the proper phase here and then a resistor to set the amplitude for the oscillation and then a cable back to the input when I run it as an oscillator and I'm looking at the signal at this point through a, a point 33 coupling a transformer well a capacitor and I take it out here and this is quite interesting it oscillates nicely and if I look at 10 Hertz here, the level I see is minus 152. It's a little better as compared to what I see when feeding it with the Wenzel oscillator. And that is unexpected. And I can't explain it. Maybe there is some AM to phase noise conversion in the filter. Uh, from the noise, the phase noise on the Wenzel. The phase noise is stronger than the AM noise, as I recall. I'm not quite sure, but I think so. Anyway, uh, looking at the phase noise of this, this is AM and phase noise. And I want to see the imaginary part of the phase noise. And as you can see, uh, the imaginary part is significantly below uh, the face noise that I'm seeing so I can trust this to be reasonably correct means I see minus 144 dBc per hertz that is not quite as good as I had hoped for uh, but it falls off quite rapidly at 50 Hertz here I see something like minus 166 and at 100 Hertz I have to do some averaging on the uh, Fourier spectrum uh, before I convert it to power spectra and here I see something like minus 171 at 100 Hertz. This paper can serve as a state of the art uh, today. It is from uh, January 2019 and you can find it on the internet. Here is the published performance minus 148.6 at 10 Hertz uh, as compared to what I observed now minus 144 but at 100 Hertz they have minus 157.8 and I see minus 172 
So this is very much better. But this isn't quite as good as I had hoped for. And I cannot measure at 1 hertz with the setup I have. And uh, if I had seen minus 148, uh, probably that is below what I can see within a reasonable time with my current test system. I have waited now 29 and a half hour nearly uh, and expanded the scale and you can see now I can go as close as 2 Hertz or maybe even less. The reason is I am feeding the local oscillators from separate power supplies now. So the common modulation due to voltage variations is no longer there. And I will print out the curves to uh, evaluate the data for phase noise and AM noise. Here is the frequency response uh, from the input to the saturated output, the one with the crossed diodes. And you can see the gain is 2.7 dB, so it does oscillate. The phase is correct also, but I'm not showing that here. Anyway, uh, bandwidth is like this with Q1. Point. I have placed a 330 kilo ohm resistor from the gates to ground. This point is now grounded. And with 330 kilo ohms, I see a small degradation of the Q. About a 2% loss. That is perfectly permitted, I think. The idea is that I could place an inductor with lower inductance at that point, uh, so I can allow a little more capacitance. Means maybe I can put more FET transistors in parallel to reduce the noise, the flicker noise. This coil with 22 PF parallel to it, to ground, and two coupling capacitors of 0.8 PF uh, gives me this frequency response. Uh, Q is 154 and the loss 31.7. I have added 330 kilo ohms in parallel and then I look at what is now bandwidth and Q. The loss has increased from 31.7 to 35. That is not as much as 6 decibels. So this coil has an impedance that is smaller than 330 kilo ohms when it runs with this 22 PF uh, as a resonator. So this is a little bit too lossy to be added into my filter. Some more turns with a slightly thinner wire uh, that gives me a Q of 161 and 25.3 decibels loss. And now I added 330 kilo ohms in parallel with the coil. And Q is now half. And loss has increased from 25 to 31. This means uh, the uh, resistance of the resonator LC is the same as this added resistor of 330K. So I can use this coil and the extra capacitance I can add by adding more transistors is about 10 PF. I have replaced the coil and added two 4.7 PF capacitors in parallel. And the response I see is a Q of 1.0, well, 1.10 million. That's a loss of about 2% as expected. But there is now uh, nearly 10 PF extra capacitance I can add in the form of more transistors. That will be the next video.